next in line. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm Teaching Elder Richard Phillips of Calvary Presbytery. I was very pleased when Overture 29 passed because I think it is good language. It will be helpful. But it is true that it does not decide or answer the issue in the PCA about the ordination of side B homosexuals. It can be in one presbytery uh, approved and another not approved. We need to make a declaration. We need a clear statement. Now the virtue of the minority report in Overture 15 is it uses straight talk. And in doing so, it imitates the Apostle Paul. Paul lived in a culture much like ours of multi-sexuality and sexuality of all kinds, much homosexuality. Paul addressed the issue in clear and pointed language. You see in Romans 1, for instance, where he describes it very pointedly. Now, when we ordain men to office, we are establishing our understanding of exemplary Christianity. And the Apostle Paul tells us for instance, in Ephesians chapter 4 and Colossians chapter 3, that when it comes to inward desires, we are to put them off. We're not to keep them on. We're not to wrap them around ourselves. They are not to be our identity. And that language being apparently confusing, the overture says, self-describing one as, uh, is contrary to the rule of the Apostle Paul. Dare I say, brothers, the Apostle Paul was not engaged in a pharisaical ep uh, exercise when he gave this rule. He was a former Pharisee who was the Apostle of Grace. And he said that Christians must not associate with their sinful identities and their desires, but we must disassociate with them. And so the issue is not someone who is struggling against this and who finds it difficulty, uh, difficult, that person has the sympathy and support of this entire denomination and their full embrace as fellow Christians, beloved by God, justified through faith uh, alone. Uh, the question is the one who is not putting it off, who is not disassociating himself. That person, by any biblical standard, is not an exemplary Christian, does not meet the biblical standards. Now, like Paul, we live in a time where man is resolved to oppose God's creator right to tell us who we are. God said, we are male and we are female. Sexuality is between a man and a woman in the bonds of marriage. That's the biblical teaching. And we live in a time where, last time I checked, I think, there's 58 gender options on Facebook. Uh, the president of the United States of America is pontificating about how essential it is that we allow irreversible surgery and medicines to be given to children by those who are imposing their ideologies on them. That's our context. We're not proposing a culture war offensive. We're proposing a clear statement to our churches. In this environment, it is greatly needed. I, I will share with you, fathers and brothers, I believe that if we are not willing to use the straight talk of the Bible, drawing the lines where the, the apostle of grace drew them, to this respect, we are failing Christ in our generation. Our churches need to look to the elders and the general assembly and see that we are obedient to the word of God and it's clear, straightforward language. I thought the mover of the minority report spoke very well that this is not prone to language police. It would actually be very hard to enforce this in a presbytery, and it should be. It would require a flagrant situation that would be challenging the, the Bible's teaching and our understanding of this. This is not something that would be easily employed in a malicious way uh, around the denomination. What it would be in this environment, to quote Paul again, in a dark and twisted generation, it would be us shining forth a light, holding forth the word of truth, and it is an act of love. It is an act of love to Christ, to our people. Yes, it's a, an act of love to the world. For us as a denomination to say, we, we've, we, there's controversy on this matter, we've been challenged, 
We are going to be obedient to the scriptures, which speak so clearly. You're, you're